Hey guys, welcome to Dr. Kim Live today. We're going to talk about growing your marriage, part two. Want to know some practical things you can start doing today to grow and deepen your marriage. We'll be right back, and that's what we're going to be talking about today. Hey guys, thank you for joining us today on Dr. Kim Live. It's so good to be here with you guys today and love it. And thanks for joining us. It's always good to have you guys here. Tuesday, it's the 23rd day of October. We're going to talk about growing your marriage today and, and how do you do that and what happens if you don't do that. So let me ask a question to start. Well, when do you feel most loved by your spouse? Just think about that. When are the times or the occasions or situations where just think, man, I really do feel loved. I really feel like he or she cares for me. I really feel um, like our like we're really connecting right now. When are, when are those things? When are those times in your marriage? And how often do they happen? And what is there something that makes them happen? Something you do, your spouse does that, that maybe sets the atmosphere for that? Or maybe it's just... Um, I don't know, just the way they uh, treat you at certain times, things you do for you. You know, we talk a lot about Gary Chapman's five love languages. And the premise of that book is that each one of us at least has one love language that probably growing up that this was the way we were loved. And so that's how we really experience love the most. That can be acts of service, like if your spouse does things for you. I had a good friend that said, you know, uh, they got along great when he cleaned the toilet and when he ran the vacuum and who did things like that because his wife's love language was act of service. Then, then there's another that is quality time, and that's what Nancy is. You know, we can, um, we can be hanging out together, uh, but if we're not really having time where we're face-to-face, where we're communicating, where we're talking every day, then she doesn't feel as loved as when we have the days that we do that. Mine's words of affirmation. When, when Nancy tells me that she cares about me or that she's proud of me or that she is um, loves the way I work with the grandkids or anything like that, those words of affirmation mean more to me than really anything. And then physical touch, and that can be sexual or non-sexual. Some people just enjoy having uh, someone touch them or the arm around them or hugging them. That really makes them feel loved. And then gifts, and that was that was really my mom's. That's the way she grew, grew up. And so I remember my dad would just bring her little gifts all the time because he got that. And it would just she would just it would just she would just light up when that would happen because those gifts meant a lot to her. So think about that and think about you. Which one of your love language will have those love languages really hit you? Is it acts of service? Is it quality of time? Is it words of affirmation? Is it physical touch? Or if it gives, is it gifts? And which one is your spouse's? Think through those. Now, are yours the same? Very seldom when I'm doing premarital counseling or when I'm counseling couples, or do they have the same love language? Most of it's different. So then the problem comes in because my love language is words of affirmation. It is really easy for me to do that to Nancy. I can tell her I'm proud of her. I think she did great in her work. I think she did this great. I can tell her uh, how good she looks. I can tell her all those things, and she likes it. It's not the same as quality time. And so I had to learn that even though mine's um, words of affirmation, hers is quality time. So for me to, for her to really feel loved by me, I got to spend quality time with her every day. I just need to do that to make sure she knows that I love her. The other thing, quality time is not mine. I mean, I enjoy quality time with her, but those words of affirmation are the ones that really make me feel great and really make me feel connected to her and loved and appreciated by her. And I really like that a lot. So what about you and your spouse? What is your love language? What's your spouse's love language? What can you do to make your spouse feel loved? Not what makes you feel loved, but what makes them feel loved. And the same thing that I want your spouse to do that for you. So you think about what that difference is in there. Sometimes I've worked with couples where maybe their love language was quality time and their spouse's was 
physical touch and they grew up in a home where there wasn't much physical touch and so that's still awkward for them so they've got to really stretch themselves and and i see that happen you know if your spouse's love language is very different or something you've never experienced sometimes it is it's hard to do that but yet if you really want want them to know that you love them you gotta that's what that's where you have to go with that um gifts some people think god gifts are just stupid but if that's your spouse's love language then gifts has got to be something that you do for your spouse consistently on a regular basis okay so um the other thing then that i would sorry i got distracted for a second Um, and then think about this another thing that i think really ties in with what we're talking about with those differences was there something that you really liked about your spouse when you were dating in those early times early years but then once you got into marriage it's kind of been an issue for you like, like I've, I've had people that, I, I had a guy and he, he talked about how organized she was and he'd never dated anybody that was organized and he loved her being organized. And then they get married and a few years into it, he's thinking, she's so controlling. She wants everything organized. She wants everything, you know, put in its place. And, and so it's something that he loved about her, now it's driving him crazy. You know, I, I love that Nancy was independent and, and yet in marriage, I wanted to be able to take care of her. And, and so when when she didn't want me to, it was like, I didn't know what to do with that. So a lot of times there's something that we really love or care about with our spouse before marriage that once we get into marriage becomes a problem. And I think that goes back to one of the things I think that really helps us grow our marriages is to accept each other's differences. You know, when when I do premarital counseling, so many couples say, we're so much alike. That's why we fell in love. And, And yeah, they are. And I think God uses that. But once they get into marriage, you find out there's a lot of differences. And so it's learning to embrace those differences that your spouse has and and make and want to be a part of their life and, and accepting those and them accepting yours so you're not fighting each other about those differences all the time. One of the things, another thing I think is really important is that we all make mistakes in our marriage. Some of us are pretty good about owning up to that. Sometimes we're not. I think being able to, one, to forgive and be quickly to ask for forgiveness really help grow your marriage. Because if I've done something wrong and I act like I haven't, well, Nancy knows I have. And so I need to apologize. You need to say, hey, I blew that, you know, and will you forgive me for that? And so, and, and then I need to, when, when she does something that bothers me, I need to forgive her. You don't want to hold on to things. I tell couples in premarital, you know, if, if you're dating someone that cannot forgive you, run. You just can't live and be married to someone that can't forgive. So the other thing I think that is important when we talk about those mistakes that we do in marriage is, do you learn from your mistakes? Or do you keep doing the same thing over and over again? Now, Jesus tells us that you're still supposed to forgive your spouse when they do that. But I also want to learn from my mistakes and I want to eliminate those. And I want my life to be better and I want to be a better husband consistently. And so... I want to work on the things that God wants me to work on. You know, one thing I've found, and I've said it before so many times, is that God's not going to change something in me or Nancy that's not good for either one of us or the other one or our marriage. He just wouldn't do that. So we're going to kind of trust him as he refines us and helps us to be better at what we do. Um, one thing, one of the things that I think is another way to grow your marriage is, is uh, surprising your spouse. You know, how, can you do something that just uh, catches them off guard that is really cool? Maybe maybe fix that special dinner for her, or maybe you bring something home for her that uh, that she's just really been wanting, or most, maybe you've both had a really hard day, and the surprise is one of you says, hey, let's go out to dinner, and, 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 and you do that, and you set aside some extra money so you don't get a debt on that, and so you just go and enjoy something like that. Look for ways to surprise your spouse. You can do little things. You can take you can take a sticky note, like a sticky note. You can write that on there, and you can leave it for them to find. That's a cool way to surprise. You know, if I do that, and Nancy used to do that for me when I work out, uh, because I used to be there. We used to be there kind of at the same time, but not in the same same area of the place where we work out. So she'd leave a little note under my windshield wiper, and I would love it when I'd get out there and see that note. I knew she thought about me, knew that she cared about me, made me excited for when she got home and we could be together again. I mean, just cool stuff like that. Um, the other thing I think is, is sometimes we get, we talk a lot about being selfish, about selfishness in our culture and how much it's a part of our culture. And then how do we 
not be selfish. How do we give to our spouse? And I think I want to look every day of some way that looks like I'm giving to her, whether that's doing something for her, saying something to her, doing something that, that I am giving, that I am getting out of myself and my selfishness and giving to her. I think that's really important. I think as we do that, then I think our spouse does those things in return. Um, so what are some ways that you can do that? Think about that. And the last thing I want to talk about, and we're going to get into some other things and let you guys answer some questions in a minute, is pray that that God will increase your, in all of these areas, in understanding how your spouse needs to be loved, how to accept the differences that you have, to be able to forgive and work on those mistakes, to learn to give in a way that really shows how much you care to your spouse. And I think if you're, again, the whole thing of awesome marriage, really, one, sure, it's it's teaching you, talking about God's plan for marriage, but it's helping you become intentional every single day about your marriage. And if you want an awesome marriage down here in the road somewhere, everything you do every day should be geared toward that. And you want to work toward eliminating those things that don't get you there. So growing your marriage every single day will get you to that awesome marriage somewhere down the line. Okay, we have a a great new version plan that goes along with this, and it is um, called Growing Your Marriage Part 2. It's on the new version app. Uh, and, the, and you can find it by looking up Growing Your Marriage. Uh, you can look at it by Awesome Marriage. You can look at it by Dr. Kim, and you'll find it. You'll find it. It's a five-part plan. Uh, there's a video series that goes with that, with each plan, and then there's a devotional, and there's scripture, and there's next steps. And so let's look at one of those videos, and then we'll come back with your questions. Well, that didn't get us very far, did it? I don't know what's wrong with that thing. Okay, we'll uh, try to get the video working here in a minute. Let's look at a couple of questions from you guys as we begin to do that. A uh, couple of questions that came in, and if you have questions, I would love for you to ask them. Got you guys up here, and hopefully you're going to... Uh, let me go back so I can make sure I get your questions. All right, yeah, just put your questions there. That would be awesome for you guys. Love to answer your questions um, live. Okay. Uh, April, why is my thing not working here? Okay. Uh, So I think for my wife, it's gifts. And for me, when she consults me, anything to do with decision making. Yeah, because I think a lot of times we want want to do those things together, don't we? We want to make those decisions with each other. We want to uh, make those decisions together. Let me get this, and let's go to a different uh, camera here. Yeah, nothing's working like I want it to today, but you know what? That's okay. It doesn't always do that, does it? Okay, so uh, Ryan, if there's no girls at your church, should you go to a different church? I live in a smaller town. I'm having trouble finding girls who are Christian that are my age. Ryan, you're 20. Yeah, I mean, I mean... Um, I guess you don't go to church just to just to find somebody, but you know that's that's a good place to find somebody and to be able to observe them. That's what I love about finding someone at a church because you can kind of observe them, you can see kind of see who they are, how they interact with people. You can get a lot of good information that way. Um, so I think you could look around. It never hurts to look around. Maybe you visit a few churches. Maybe you have to since you're in a small town, you may have to drive to another town. But I think you, um, and you know, I don't know much about the church you're in. I would say if it's a good church, maybe it continues to be kind of your home base as you go out a little bit. But make sure that you go. You don't just go to a church to find. A, a girl that you go to churches, make sure it's a church that teaches the things you believe in, that, that talks about Jesus and talks about, you know, the things that are important that are really the foundations of, of our faith. And so I think that'd be a great idea. Uh, April, thank you so much for the videos and devotionals have helped myself in my marriage in many ways. I can't 
wait to dive into this new devotional. I hope you enjoy it, and I wish I could have shown you the video that goes along with it. Hopefully, we'll get that up in just a minute. All right. I'd uh, love to have you guys ask some more questions. I had a couple come in earlier. Um, this one says, the Bible says a, a man shall leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. What does it mean to become one flesh? Well, um, I, th I think one of the things that happens in that is um, if you look at, I think it's a physical part of it. I think that's definitely it. I think, but I think they're, you know, the uh, Hebrews use the word dode. And I think it's a combination of the physical, the emotional, the spiritual, uh, sexual, mental. I think all those things come together. And I think that's that, that one flesh is where the two become one is, yes, you still have your identity. And, and, and you know, I think some people say, well, uh, you get lost in each other. Well, maybe sometimes, but I think you've, you've got to have your separate identity. You don't to, want to be a mess, but you see the value each, of each other. And you see because that because your spouse is in your life that you are stronger and that your spouse is stronger too. And you're better off together than you are apart. And being one together with God at the center allows you to go forward. So yes, I, th I think it means one flesh, certainly the physical part of it, but I think it just encompasses that whole thing that God had in mind when he said marriage, and I think that's that's why it's so important to, to work through things in marriage, to continue to strive to have the kind of marriage God wants for you and has for you, all those kind of things because they're so, so important to happen. All right, great question. Uh, another question, should we share with our spouse how we came to know the Lord? Should we regularly talk with each other about things that are we are learning on our spiritual journey? Uh, yeah, no, I think one of the things, it's so interesting that so often when I talk to couples in counseling that they really never talk about spiritual things. Um, I've had so many couples that when I suggest to them praying together, it's like they look at me like it's so foreign. And, and these are people, many of them that pray to pray alone all the time. They just never thought about praying together. So I think sharing your spiritual journey is important. Uh, I love finding out, uh, Nancy's spiritual journey, how important her granddad was in her life and the part that he played in helping her become um, a Christian. And then I, I love telling her the, the influence my granddad had and some things like that. Uh, when we came to know Jesus and, and both of us making a recommitment after our marriage, because even though we made a commitment younger, it really... I just needed to do that again. I, I had gone, through, you know, just kind of away from the Lord for a while. It's time to come back in a way that could, um, that he wanted me to really, and especially to be the husband for her. So yes, I think you share those things and then you talk together about how, how are you gonna grow and how can we grow together? And you really be intentional about the spiritual part of your marriage. It makes such a difference, such a difference. And if you haven't prayed together, try it. Start somewhere, say the Lord's Prayer together. Uh, make a list of things you're going to be both praying about for each other. If you don't feel like praying out loud right now, don't just hold hands and, and then pray about the same things. You know, anything to get you connected together with God is going to be awesome. It's going to be great. All right. Um, we have a one thing video that I don't know if that's going to work either, but we're going to try it here in a minute and see if we can make, uh, make it work. This is just not. I talk to a lot of couples who are dating or engaged. Often I hear the same lines from many of them. We're so much alike. We like the same things. This is usually good and it's probably one of the things that attracted them to each other. After all, we need to have things in common if we're going to make a marriage work. But what about differences? You know, they exist in every relationship. We just don't always see them, or we minimize them, or we think they will disappear after we get married. The truth is that while... T mm. Two people can like the same things, they're different. The di idea is not to marry someone who is just like you. First, that will never happen, and second, it really would be pretty boring. Differences are part of life. The key in marriage is how we handle those differences. Nancy and I have a lot in common, especially after being together so many years. But we also have a lot of differences. One of the qualities I liked about her when we were dating was that she was very independent. But after we married, I wanted my independent wife to depend on me. 
I wanted to take care of her. And she thought I wanted to control her. We spent way too many years trying to change each other, and that honestly was miserable. When we finally decided to accept our differences and see them as strengths for our relationship, most of our conflicts really stopped. It was a long, painful process, but I had to learn to both value and embrace her independence in our marriage. Once I finally got there, I was able to see the value her independence brought to our marriage, something I had been missing out on. Once I accepted her as she was, she let her guard down, and we connected in a way we never had before. So let me ask you, do you accept the differences between you and your spouse? Try this. Make a list of your spouse's differences. Then write down two positive things under each one of them. It may be a small step, but it starts you in the right direction of accepting your spouse's differences and moving toward an awesome marriage. You have two choices. You can either let your differences pull you apart and allow them to be a source of conflict, or you can accept and celebrate your differences. I happen to believe that God made us all unique and that our differences are what make our marriages very truly special. Yeah, uh, it, it definitely does. You know that we talked about, I talked a little bit about differences and gosh, in counseling, I, I, I just see how that is such a huge issue for couples. They just I let those a lot of differences are dating or engaged. pull them apart Often instead of embracing them and saying, God put us together for so a reason alike. and we are strong we like together. The same thing. And this accepting good and embracing and figuring those differences out to together other. instead of letting them After pull all, you apart. After all, we need to have so, things in common. Um, hope you guys enjoyed that. As you know, that was from uh, Growing Your Marriage you know, they exist Part in every relationship. 2. And we just now don't always see we're going to see the one thing video. Them, or we think they will disappear after we get married. The truth is that while well, two people can like the same thing, Yeah, I just think we're going to do that. We, nothing is working like I want it to, which is great. New computer today, so fast. Uh, I love it. Hopefully, it's keeping us from bogging down and needles those things and getting kicked off like we have in the past. But for some reason, I'm not playing my videos like I want to. Okay, let's look at some more questions, and we'll come back, and we'll just watch whatever will come up, okay? Um, so let's look at another question. And it is... What do we do if we feel we're not under, do not understand each other? What can we do to improve the situation? That's you know, such a great question. You know, uh, I think we talked a couple of weeks ago. We talked about the importance of listening, and I think when we learn to listen well, then we understand each other so much better. And I'm, I'm I mean active listening. And so if Nancy's talking, I'm really listening to what she's saying. I'm able to. Uh, affirm what she said. I'm able to say, okay, is this what you meant, or is um, or is this not what you meant, or or tell her what I thought she said, and then she can say, yes, you got it, or or no, let me explain it another way. I think listening is so important, and you know I've said before, we can listen five times faster than somebody can talk. So while somebody, while your spouse is talking, you've got to really focus. You got to be intentional. That's why it's so important when you're talking about important things to look each other in the eye, to, to sit or stand face to face, so that you can. Um, Stay focused on what they're saying. And so, and now, if you work on those things and, and, and you feel like we're still understanding each other, then I would talk to maybe get a mentor couple, maybe go to Christian counseling, something that will help you, especially if it's something that needs to be resolved or you need to uh, work through or because you feel like we are so apart on this thing, we got to figure out how to get together on it. The key is to just keep working on it. Don't give up. That's what I see couples do. It gets hard. It gets difficult. My gosh, we can't figure this thing out. We don't understand each other. And so they just go their separate ways and say, saying, no, we're going to fight for this thing. We're going to figure this out together. Okay, another question. What can you do to foster more spontaneity and laughter in a relationship? Uh yeah, that's good. You know, I see so many couples that I don't think have fun together. And I think I think that at one time we all had fun together, hopefully, or we probably wouldn't be married. So yeah, having fun together is such an important thing. Um, I think you've, you know, I think one thing you can talk about it and say, man, well, let's put some laughter back in. We used to do that pretty well. Um, and I think we get in ruts. I think we get rigid. And I think, you know, Nancy and I have gotten in ruts and we think, 
we got to get out of those ruts. And so if we get in the rut of maybe ever Friday night, we're just, uh, kids aren't here or when we, when we're, the kids were home, the kids weren't here. And we just kind of sit around at home and not really do anything. Instead of just saying, man, let's go out, let's go explore. Let's go find something new to do. Um, or just grabbing each other and say, Hey, let's, let's go do something or let's go look at this or whatever it is. I think you've got to work on it. I think you've got to be intentional on it. Cause I think we all can get lazy and we just kind of it's easy to sit around. It's easy to let another weekend go and we haven't done anything. It's easy to let an evening go and you just haven't spent time together. Uh, tell each other jokes. Watch watch YouTube funny videos together. We do that. We see them all the time. It is There's so many hilarious ones on there. Just do that. Do things together that are funny. Maybe you find a, a TV show. Next time I'm watching uh, Parks and Recreation right now. Uh, we're just in the second season. It's got some funny things. It's probably a little edgy at times, but it's funny and we laugh at that together. And and so look for things that you can do to laugh together and to have fun together and be spontaneous. Great question. Great question. All right, let me look over here. Uh, uh, Kenneth, thanks for your good words. Appreciate that so much. I'm going to see if we can get something here to work. Uh, this is a vlog. We have our vlogs on YouTube. And they are, there's so much stuff we have on YouTube from Awesome Marriage. Uh, these we try to make a point. They're kind of fun. Uh, and so this one is on our differences. And so let's uh, look at this one. Maybe. Things, they're different. The idea is not to... Nope. It's just not going to work, is it? It is not going to work. I have no idea why those things aren't working like they're supposed to. But anyway, we'll move right on without them. Um, any more questions there? Okay, we've got one more question that came in that um, I'd love to talk about before we get out of here today. When romantic feelings ebb and flow, what do you do to fan the flames of romance and keep them burning? Great question. you got to do it. You've got to keep the romantic things Going and I think I think it getting it goes back to communication. You got to talk about it. You'll see Santa over here. I can't believe I'm, I've got that Santa. I got this. I'd show. I'll show it to you next week because I've already run the batteries down on it. He does. Uh, can't touch this. And he dances and he's hilarious. I'm gonna get off of that shot so that you don't have to look at him. Okay, but we'll show you to him. He's he's great. Got it at um, Home Depot. They had like all these uh, different ones like snowman and all kind of christmas deals i mean so nobody was there but me and so i had them all going they were all singing and doing their stuff a couple of the people that work there walked by and they just kind of shook their head anyway this is the one i like the best so that's what i bought it so i'll show it to you next week after i put some batteries in it um okay back last question about romance up and flows how do you keep them burning man i think you got to work on it you got to be intentional you got to go to each other and, and and talk about it and you say what do you think is romantic right now Google it. Get get some ideas from Google and say, do you think any of these things are romantic? And if they do, just have them check it, circle it. Then do those things. But you got to be intentional. You got to look for opportunities. And it may feel awkward because maybe you didn't, as a guy, maybe you haven't done it since you got her to say yes and you put the ring on her and you got married. But no matter who you are, you may not think you're Romeo, but I guarantee you she's a Juliet and you need to romance her. Guys, I'm talking to you about this. And it's not just anniversary, and it's not just uh, Valentine's Day, and it's not just her birthday. It is looking for ways to romance her all the time. Doing nice things for her. Maybe, maybe you fix dinner one night and you put the candlelight dinner on. Maybe you just take her to a special place and you don't have to spend money. Some of our best dates, romantic dates, there's a, a lake here and there's sailboats on it, and we would go and just get a grab something to eat. Maybe we got it from McDonald's or something. We'd sit on the dam of that of that lake and we would watch the sailboat and we'd watch the sunset and it was so cool. So look for romantic things you can do. And if you can't come up with anything, like I said, Google it. You will come up with some ideas. All right, guys, uh, this has been fun. I wish we would have had some of this uh, work that hasn't today for some reason, but um, next week it will. And We'll see you guys then. Next week, though, we are going to talk about Seven Secrets to an Awesome Marriage. Uh, this is my first book that came out a couple of years ago with Zondervan. Uh, we're going to talk about some of the things with it. We're going to talk about the Uversion plan, which is one of my favorite ones that goes along with this. And we're going to um, do some other fun things as we do that. I've got a new book that comes out in... Um, 
Uh, January 8th, 14 Keys to Lasting Romance. It's a fun book. We're going to be talking a lot more about it between now and launch date. And you're going to have opportunities to pre-buy it. And get some really cool stuff if you do that. So thanks for joining us today on uh, Dr. Kim Live. It has been fun having you guys. And we'll see you guys again next week.